market initially loved it when Fed Chief Janet Yellen decided to do the same thing and keep interest rates low for the moment, at least at first, even as that decision didn't come as all that much of a surprise. But there's one group that could have really benefited from a rate hike, and that's the banks, because they make more money off your deposits when the Fed raises short-term rates. Sooner or later, though, the Fed will start tightening, and when that happens, you'll want to own the best bank in the country, the San Francisco-based Wells Fargo. In fact, I think this one's worth the wait, even if Janet Yellen puts off any rate hikes until next year, because Wells has a tremendous deposit base, gigantic exposure to the mortgage market, a fabulously streamlined business, and most important, a top-notch management. That's why we own it for my charitable trust, one of the biggest positions you can follow along at ActionAlertsPlus.com. And, of course, it's 2.87% yield doesn't hurt either. So let's take a closer look with John Stump. I'm very excited about this. The esteemed chairman and CEO of Wells Fargo. Hear more about the state of his bank and the U.S. economy. Mr. Stump, welcome to Mad Buddy. Jim. Good to see you. It's nice to be here. You know, I, I, you, sh- you shouldn't get excited about seeing a banker, but I, I, what you build is amazing. Well, and your I'll, predecessor, too. And, and, and people, actually, we're in our 164th year this, uh, this year. And this is our hometown, San Francisco. So we started in 1852. So there's been a lot of people, you know, along the way. You know, if there wouldn't have been innovation, yeah. we would have stagecoaches on the freeway here. Well, let's start with innovation. You probably have the most, uh, you're probably the most technologically advanced bank in the country, even though you're the largest. Well, you know, we actually have an innovation center. And we actually follow our customers. And some of the people influencing our industry today are here in the Bay Area, but not in our industry. Google's, Apple's, and those kind of folks have a big influence on how customers think about retailing and how, and how to get services. I know those are the companies you actually say you admire. I do admire them. They take complexity and they make it simple. That is real innovation. Anybody can take simplicity and make it complex. The other way around is tough. All right, let's talk about today, because I know that you're a bank that has said, listen, we're not going to wait for the Fed to move, we're going to start move, doing money with doing things with our money that no, that not many banks are doing. Yet your stock fell three percent today. Isn't that an anomaly? Given the fact that you're the one bank of the big banks that said, "Listen, we're going to find ways to make money with that money," and everyone else is kind of just petrified and keeping it all in cash. Yeah, we actually went out last quarter and said we think rates could be lower for longer. Right. You, you know, right. and well, you know, and we don't try to spec. We don't speculate on rates, but we do have you know, views on things. If you look at the rest of the world, Jim, in fact, I think today's comments and, and the activity by the Fed or lack of activity was a statement about the rest of the world, almost more so than the U.S. So when you look at negative rates in some places, slowing in China, you know, the, EU, uh, uh, the EU doing right. only okay, that has a big influence on the global economy. So, I, so if you took the United States in its just isolation, it's actually doing quite well. Yes, yes. But... In a global economy, surely, you know, lack of exports today probably takes a point off of our, our GDP growth. No, I also felt that to some degree, I mean, you're largely dom- domestic. 97% of 97%, what we do here. So that 1% that you just talked about knocked off won't really hurt you. But your, C- your CFO the other day came out, and I was quite surprised. He said commercial real estate has seen significant slowdown. How's that yeah. possible? Well, you know, Actually, a lot of in our that's from a lending side. If right. you look at actually construction, there's cranes up everywhere. Okay. But a lot of fixed income investors uh, or insurance companies are buying a lot of those and loans that we would have had traditionally. So it puts pressure on what's going on in the portfolio. Although we've seen some growth, it's it's uh, it's just a lot of competition for only a certain number of assets. But at the same time, you did that very uh, opportunistic acquisition with GE. We love that deal. Talk in a fact, little bit about it, because I think people don't understand the other side of what GE's doing. Well, GE, actually, I don't know that company as well as I should, but GECC, the finance side, was half or more than half of the company. Right. And through, I think, Jeff and, and the board and the management team want them to become more of an industrial company, and they're reducing the reliance on the financial part of the business. Right. So we bought a number of loans there, and with Blackstone we financed some, and we think that's a great add to our organic business. Now, I, I want to mention that your bank was the most opportunistic during the big decline. How did it all work out? Because you, you took on a lot of assets that I know you couldn't have been that crazy about. You had a lot of real estate, actual corporate real estate. Where are you now versus where you were five years from now? And where will you be? Because you're a buyer back of stock, you're increasing the dividend. What's it look like five years ago? What's it look like now? What's it gonna look like five years from yeah. now? Let me go to the run-up of to 2008 or nine. Yes. How you behave and how you think about credit and serving customers in the boom times 
will all allow you to have the capital and capacity when the real opportunities come in the bad times. So there was times between 2000 and 2008 where other mortgage lenders, as an example, were making loans with nothing down, no verification, the so-called liar loans, they were doing negative AM mortgages, and we didn't participate in most of that. So we gave up billions of originations, hundreds of millions of profit, but then when everything came apart, we were able to use our capital to buy a Wachovia. And that turned out to give be- Give you the regional and national. Exactly, it, it, it gives you the, you know, the ability to do that. Right. And now that has, that'll be the, go down as the best large acquisition ever in our industry. Remember, I don't think ever can happen And what scale, what percent of the country did you have versus now? Yeah, in fact, it was about, we were almost the mirror image west of the Mississippi that Wachovia is on the, on the right. east side. So we were both about, $600 billion companies we put together for $1.2 trillion. Today we're almost $1.7 or $1.8. Uh, deposits have grown, core deposits from like $650 billion to a $1.2 trillion. Loans are up uh, uh, substantially. So we're essentially a Main Street bank. W we do traditional banking. Some of it's quite sophisticated, but we're not a, you know, we're not a money center bank. We're not a you know, we don't corner aluminum markets. That's not who we are. And, and that's why when I read about the Justice Department investigating banks, I, I, I never see the largest bank in the country mentioned. Well, you know, we didn't do everything right. Okay. And, yeah. and, and we've, we've had issues, but everybody in our company, we think, is a risk manager. You know, how we behave, how we think about going to market. Because I, you know, people surprise when I say this. Our number one goal when we get up in the morning is not about making money. It's about serving customers. That's the reason for business. The result is you make money. So, and we think about risk-adjusted rates of return. We, want, we think about, you know, will this loan, every loan's a good one the day you make it. The key is you have to get a return sometime. And in the lending business, the margins are sufficiently thin, you have to get it right most of the time. But that's not the only risk we manage today, so that's how we think about it. Well, speaking about return, Warren Buffett, obviously, huge, huge shareholder, and that's a pretty amazing marquee yeah. in itself. But you've been returning capital. Can you get aggressive when you see your stock down, say, 2.3, to say, look, this is really nuts, 2 to 3%. We're going to be buying back stock. Or is the government still saying, wait a second, we don't want you doing that? Yeah, every year there is something called the CCAR, the, the Comprehensive Capital uh, uh, Analysis that we do. And as part of that process, we set our dividend policy for the year and our, and our capital buybacks or our stock buybacks as part of a whole capital return. Now, we can make decisions within quarters of how we do that, and we always want to buy it, of course, when the intrinsic value right. is, is more than, than the actual value or, or, or the stated value. And so, that could be right here? You know, uh, it could be, you know, you're not going to get me to commit to that, Jim, no. but, but, but we think returning capital is really important. Well, that's terrific. It's John Stump, Chairman, President, and CEO of Wells Fargo, which you know I think is the best bank in the country. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.